I, I do see that happening because it, it would be so problematic. Um, the faster we can get the self-driving cars, the better. We'll be safer, faster, we'll realize all these benefits. Um, so introducing a road driver in <laughs> drinking or as our medicine or something into that equation will be increasingly uh, uh, too um, uh, problematic. So uh, I don't know, again, it's the mechanism. Is it a federal thing? Is it, it starts by not renewing licenses. Do you have some ideas? I was going to say, let's get you more work. That's right. It's better to have laws. It's better to have laws. Thank you for the great question. Thank you. Thank you very much.
we will see an explosion of productivity and an explosion of love. Productivity equals love. Because if you work with more people, you invite the economic growth of the by more people. But productivity increases in, say, the number of cars that you make in one day, that is an increasing love. But so productivity is hugely important. Now, what is very strange is that although we have had quite some meditation over the last 10 years, we've seen that productivity has come down. And in fact, productivity has come down over the last 50 years. It has come down from 5-6% in Europe to 2.5% is coming down from around 3% in the United States to 2.5%. We had to do some catching up, that's why we were still at 6% and the United States in the 60s only troops. We are still in the United States a little bit between 1995 and 2005, that was the ICT revolution, but now we see 0.5%. How about what has happened? First of all, one thing that has happened is that there were not so much investments. There are big prices, and because of these big prices, we didn't have so much investments, and that's why the productivity has come down a lot. Second of all, we don't measure very good the improvement in productivity. We don't measure very good the, uh, the, the, the improvement in, in quality. For example, when you have an iPhone, an iPhone, it's not being, uh, when you have a, buy an iPhone, let's say, five years ago, when you have an iPhone today, it costs the same. The iPhone today is much better than an iPhone five years ago, and that is not being translated in statistics. But what I think is most important is the following thing. I think today, what we've seen today, is that we have product innovation, maybe instead of a process innovation. What we've seen in the first and the second industry, is a process innovation. Instead of making one platform, because of a uh, new process, we can make in one day 10 telephones. That is process innovation. We make much more telephones, we run much more cars in the same time. And so that is why the productivity is increasing huge. What we see today is product innovation. Product innovation saying that we have much better products, that we have much better phones. Much better phones, an iPhone for example, but on the other side, you see that this iPhone comes in the place of music, MP3, uh, and, uh, as well the GPS, the camera, all these other things. So you have very nice products, but the problem is it's coming in the way of this. And if you look at it, then you see that. Some companies are hugely innovative, but because of this process innovation, because of this product innovation, other companies are hugely dead. And if you see the turnover that is realized by this Apple, you see that this Apple yeah, has a huge turnover, but the turnover of Apple is nothing compared to the turnover of all these companies that are disappeared. And so that's why we have not so much increase in economic growth, and that's why productivity is not increasing as much. Now there's another thing. There's another thing, and then we go back to the music industry. If you go to the music industry, and so if we look to the number of sales or sold per capita, then we see that it went down from 1 in the 1970s to 0.1 in 2003. Then the digital revolution, music was digitalized, and you see a huge increase in the number of single sales per capita, two or three. So that is very that is very good for the customer. That's very good for the consumer. And I think what you can see here is that for the same price, we listen to much more music. And that is consumer response. So we realize huge, we see that we have a huge increase in consumer response. But Against that, you see that there is no producer surplus. So it's not the producer surplus because what you see over this period 2003-2010, you have 2005-2015, you see that the turnover has decreased from 20 million in the United States to 15 million. So you have realized a huge consumer surplus, but you don't have any producer surplus. So there are two things, two main things, next to the fact that there's no 
put so much investment, why productivity hasn't gone up over the past years. Now, next to productivity, I did as well, as I said in the beginning, a little survey with the business. Because what you see here is that yeah, there was a lot of change in the music industry, travel industry has changed enormously as well. How is this going to change the other businesses? And so I went to talk to 15 biggest Belgian companies. And I was asking them, are you ready for the public disruption? And I just want to show you a couple of my questions and their answers. First question was, is digital revolution an opportunity or a threat? In the service companies, 100% said it's a huge opportunity. <coughs> Manufacturing said in another commerce it's a huge opportunity. Everybody says huge opportunities, and only half or less than half says, okay, you might be a threat. But if you were going to read the comments, they will see that a lot of them saw as well a threat. They didn't say it there, but they said it in their comments. For example, my former employer, the PC Bank, said, okay, if you move too early, you lose your whole rights if you're going to go to an online bank. But if you move too late, you will lose your own rights. So it's a challenge. When do you have to move? It's a timing challenge. Same thing with Galeza. Galeza, which is the world company in the food line, which is much more common in the United States, they say e commerce is not profitable yet. So if you don't offer the service, you might lose customers, but if you do offer the service, you're sure as hell are going to lose more. So that's a big dilemma. So there is a huge threat because of the digital revolution. And so if we look to one of the companies that really is threatening the retailers, then we have here a company that started as a small online library. It's Amazon. Amazon.com, and if you look to the evolution of the stock since the beginning of 2015, I promise I have to show you some stock prices, is that it increased with 150%. And if we compare that with the biggest retailers in the United States, then you see that it's a huge challenge. This is the SP 500, it has been stable a little bit up. This is Walmart, Walmart, the biggest retailer in the world. It has decreased by 20%. This is Macy's and this is Gap. You see Macy's and Gap, they went down 48% and 50% over the last two years. So there is a huge threat for this company, is that is for sure. Another question, do you have a strategy for digitalization? <coughs> that was very remarkable, I thought it was very remarkable, is that for the service companies, almost three companies out of Four said, yeah, we have a strategy or we have a plan that's almost implemented. But if you look at industrial companies, more than 50% of industrial companies say, you know, we don't have a strategy and we don't need a strategy. And that I think is very, very strange. The implement of things is just starting. In Germany, we have Industry 4.0 that is starting to make waves. And you see, industry is really not seeing it coming. I think that's going to be a big challenge in the future. What did Montea say? Montea is busy, is, is, is active in warehousing. They say, hey, what we see in the future is that you will have different collaborations for each project. And what will be the best network base? So you will go more and more to projects. You will go, you will go to work to this practical integration anymore where you start with your uh, commodities and you stop with your after sale. No, you will do project by project. And these projects you will do with different people, different people, different companies, and you will, you will expand your network. And more and more you will see that all the business is about small projects that you are doing, and most with the best networks, most with the best partners, will be with you. That's what we see in the banking sector as well. The banking sector, we see that small pieces of our most juicy things that we do are being taken by other companies. And we start to work with these companies to protect ourselves. That's what we see more and more, and that's what we'll see more and more, not only in the banking sector, but in every other sector. Our boss says the most challenging thing is the digital convention in our organization. That will take time.
that, that will take effort. And that's why I think this digital revolution, it won't go from one day to the other. It will come in 10 years, it will come in 20 years, because there is this need for behavior to change. People will have to change their behavior, they will have to get convinced about this digital revolution. And this digital revolution will only go as fast as people can follow. And for the moment, I think we're going already very fast, maybe too fast for a lot of people. Last question, and that is something of two economists, probably you have seen it already, Fred and Osborne, two economists from Oxford, they say, by 2025, and it's a study of, uh, let's say, five years ago, by 2025, 47% of all jobs will be automated. And I ask the companies, do you see that as well in your world? Service companies, 10% said yes, we see that. So that is very challenging. Other companies, say the majority said, as well as industry, as manufacturing, no, but we see more automation. We see more automation than today. Meaning that we see more loss of jobs than today. And that's something that I want to go into, into my third point. First of all, collectivity growth slows down because of this product elevation and because of this consumer surplus. Second, ready for the common disruption, I think service companies more or less ready, but I think the industrial companies are not all ready. Now, what does this all do with society? I think it had as a result higher inequality. If you look over the past 20 years, and this is a graph with uh, all uh, European countries, Ireland, Belgium, Spain, United Kingdom, you see here the change in the occupational employment share in the low, middle, and high wage class. You see, for example, in my country, that the middle class, the change in the occupational employment share has come down to 12%. So there are less and less people that are working in this middle income class. More folks uh, in the high income class than more in the low income class. And that is the evolution over the last 20 years. So minus 12% in share of the middle income occupation in the class. Now, this is not something new. We've seen this before. We've seen this before in the second industrial level. If you look at the second industrial revolution, and this is now for the United States, and you see that the income, share of income class for the skilled global workers has come down over the far, uh, past 50 years from 1860 to 19, uh, 1910 with 15 basis points. 15 basis points is more or less the same as what happened in Belgium. From the other side, you see the share of patient uh, employment in high income, high school, and in low income, operative and skill, you see it all with uh, in total 50%. So it's not in Europe what is happening. We've seen this thing before. What we didn't see before is another revolution. The other revolution is the real day of the What we see over the last 10 years, in fact, from the time that digitalization entered the economy, is that 10% of the most productive, of the most profitable companies have seen their return on equity, where return on capital employed increase from 40% to 100% or more. And now, if that's all the time, all the companies, and these companies change all the time, that is no problem. But these companies that realize our return on capital employed or return on invested capital, Realize an internal investment capital of more than 80, 100 percent, it's all the time the same. So there really is a real take all economy because of this digitalization. And that, together with what we just discussed, is giving huge inequality. Huge inequality because these companies as well distribute their big profits with their, uh, with their employees. And so if you are very lucky that you are working for Google, Facebook, or probably as well as Silicon Valley, and your company is profitable, then you will realize big gains, big salary gains as well. If you're not that lucky, and you work for example in the industry, you will see probably your salary going down, or not going up as fast. And that's what we 
we see what we saw over the past 30 years. I've taken it from 1967, uh, but in fact, the divergence started in 1982. And you see the top five of earnings, of people with the biggest earnings, have come up with 90% over the past 30, 35 years. has come up with 75% of their salaries. If you see to the middle class, if you see to the lower class, then you see from 1982 on, it was uh, more or less uh, the same that they earned, was plus 20% since 1967. So there's a huge increase in inequality that we've seen. Now also that we've seen before. That is a little bit more scary. If you look to the top 100% and what they divide in total American income, the top 1% distributes about 20%, 18% of total American income. It's about the same as at the start of the Great Depression. I don't say we're going to the Great Depression. I just say that there is a big resemblance between two things. So we have to see that this inequality we have to diminish it. We have to see that we have to reskill, that we keep people up to, uh, up, up to speed with the digital revolution. Because if we don't, we might get something like this. Huge unemployment, huge unemployment, and that is not so bad as long as productivity is going on. And I think it is going to go up in 10 years, 15 years, when we have Internet of Things and when there's more investment and everything. Because if you have much more productivity, that yeah, means that it's just uh, distribution, uh, that you just have to distribute the economic growth more fairly, and then there is no problem. And then there are things, as Madam just said, that are coming up, like this thing, basic income. And even the economist is talking about basic income. But let's be clear about one thing. This Basic income is not a social value. If you look to the basic income, then we just replace all the unemployment and all the other benefits in the United States for a basic income. They have a basic income of $6,300 a year. So that's about $500 each month. I don't know about you, but it's going to be very, very difficult to survive in such a now I think we should avoid this. I think we should avoid this, and how should we do that? We should reskill people. We should reskill people. We should take care that everybody can have a job sooner or later, and it's well in the digital revolution. That means that we have to have the new skills. In school, let's say until 12 years, okay, we have to teach uh, that you can read, that you can write, that you can do that. But then we have other kinds of skills. Other kinds of skills that are very important in the digital revolution. That means that you have to be able to manage a whole of information. It means that you have to be socially intelligent, emotionally intelligent. It means that you have to be able to work in virtual groups, virtual groups, because when I'm working here, probably I will work on a project with somebody that is working in India. It means that I have to be uh, aware of the cultural difference. So there are all different kinds of skills that we have to learn that are totally different than the skills that we have today. I think the most important thing, the big part of what has to happen, is that government has to work together with businesses. Government has to work together with business to make a transformation. To make a transformation, to say, okay, these are the skills that we have today, these are the skills that we have and that we really need more, and these are the skills that we really have to transform. For example, Jonathan said, truck drivers. Truck drivers, we have three, eight million truck drivers. We will have to reskill them. It's going to be a challenge to do that because they're all the time on the road. So when are we going to reskill them? We will have to do something about it because otherwise, all of a sudden, instead of having 10 truck drivers driving one after another, you have a couple of trucks. There will be just two truck drivers that are accompanying these trucks in case something goes wrong. Same with cashiers. If you know about the new plans of Amazon.com, yeah, they want to make the shop where there are no cashiers. 
uh, anymore uh, necessary. Same thing with the postal, uh, postal man, postal office, US Postal Service has diminished their people with 25% over the last 10 years. So this is a transformation that is hugely important to reasonable people to take care that everybody can come along in this fourth industrial revolution. Then I want to conclude just recapping a little bit. Productivity growth, that's not known because of lower uh, lower uh, Second, ready for the coming disruption. I don't think that industry is ready for the second uh, for the coming disruption. Higher inequality, what can we do? I think what we usually have to do is start to reskill, start to reskill the new workers because one thing is for sure, the fourth digital revolution is knocking on the door and it's not going to come away. Thank you very much. Do have time for one or two questions before uh, jumping on the one in Any question? Any question? Okay, thank you okay, for the presentation. Uh, I think we have time for networking and for enjoying the wine which we you have behind. So please, cheese. Uh, and the cheese, which is uh, coming out of the fridge in one second. Uh, so thank you all. Yeah, you, we have like 45 minutes to go, so time to chat.